a short talk on coin selection. Uh, and uh, oh, my name is Cardio One, by the way, or Color. Uh, everyone calls me Color. So um, Japanese people find it confusing, but in Japanese, my name is Kare. So um, anyway, so uh, coin selection, uh, what it is and how it works in Bitcoin Core. And uh, interestingly enough, in the latest version of Bitcoin Core, which was released yesterday, um, we have changed, well, um, they have changed the coin selection algorithm uh, for, I think, the first time since a long time. Um, so we're using uh, something with some more scientific rigor behind it uh, now, which which is the good news. Anyway, um, okay, so um, the concept behind coin selection first. Um, so we receive Bitcoin in transactions. You've heard this before, I'm sure. Um, and the Bitcoins that we hold, we refer to them as um, uh, using outpoints. And an outpoint is just uh, the ID of a transaction somewhere uh, plus an index inside of that transaction. And this is the index of the outputs, uh, which refers to the outpoint which we own. It's convoluted, but so basically um, you have a transaction with two outputs. The first one is yours. The second one is someone else's. So you have a outpoint which says the transaction ID and index zero, which you have the first one. Um, now important to note is that you never ever have the same outpoint for two separate um, uh, UTXOs. So even if someone sends you money for some odd reason in a single transaction sends you money twice to the same address. Um, so like output first is to address ABC and output second is to, to address ABC. Um, you still have a distinction between these two outpoints because the first one has index zero and the second one has index one. Right. Um, so when we think about the balance in our wallets, uh, what we're actually talking about is uh, the sum of all of our outputs, the sum of all of our UTXOs, the coins that we have not spent. Um, so when we're sending someone coins, we have to do exactly the same way that we do when we pay money at a store using cash. Uh, that is, if we're paying $4.99, we can't just magically produce 499. We have to find coins, and usually we just give them a five. And then they give us back a, a, a point of one. Uh, so we get back one cent, and we pay them $5, a $5 bill. And this is exactly the same process that we have to do here, because all of these outpoints, you can't split them up or spend half of them or spend a quarter of them. Either you spend them or you don't spend them. So in this case, you have to find a good selection of coins or uh, in the sense of, of like $7, you find a $5 bill and two $1 bills. That's a great case for paying $7. Um, but if you don't have a $5 bill and two uh, $1 bills, you may have to pay a 20 and get back up. I mean, you know, more than you're paying, you get back. This is the same case with coin selection in, uh, in, in Bitcoin. Um, so we have to pick enough coins to, to cover and then we have to send back the change to ourselves as a new coin. So we actually create a new coin for ourselves. This is our change. Uh, and then we send the rest to the person who we're sending to, and we keep a little for the fee. Um, so now, this is a little naive, uh, and there are actually better heuristics than this, but this is a good starting point. So we want to minimize the number of, number of coins that we spend. Um, and this is good for several reasons. Um, um, so whenever we use several coins at the same time, we're telling the entire world that this coin and this coin and this coin, they belong to the same person. We are not telling them who that person is unless they know who is paying money to whom. Um, but if I'm paying you money and I use three UTXOs and one of them happens to be connected to um, a bank robbery or something, then uh, you know you can connect that to me, which is probably good for the police, but bad for me. Um, and um, another reason why this uh, finding as few coins as possible is a good reason is because whenever whenever you add coins, you have to sign 
the coins. You have to tell, uh, you have to prove that you own them. And you do this using signatures that you attach to your, uh, to your transaction. And that means the transaction grows in size. And because it grows in size, you have to pay more uh, because you're paying the fees paid per byte uh, of transaction size. So the smaller your transaction is, the cheaper it is to send for you. So this is all also a matter of just economic gaining um, a few satoshis or however much it is. Um, okay. Um, right. So there are several heuristics, as I said before. Uh, one heuristic is to find. Um, let me see here. Um, right. So um, if we can find enough coins to exactly cover. Uh, the uh, the amount we're sending. We don't even have to include a change to ourselves. Like I'm paying a $5 bill to pay $5 and then I don't need to get anything back. That means our transaction is smaller and that means it's also a little cheaper. Anyway, this whole process is called coin selection. And um, uh, a lot changed, as I said, with, uh, with 0 0.17. So there's a new algorithm called uh, branch and bound. Uh, also known as Merch's algorithm, because the guy who made it was called his name is called Merch. And then there's also the old uh, algorithm called Knapsack Solver, and that's still used as a fallback right now, but it's probably going to go away completely in a future version. Um, there's also something uh, where coins with the same destination are grouped together. This is an optional feature that you can turn on if you want. You probably should. Um, so basically, what this does is if 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 you get uh, if you have someone sending you money to the same address more than once, then um, this is obviously a privacy problem because um, if you spend partially like one of those UTXOs together with 10 other coins, and then you spend another one of those together with 10 other coins, then you've t told the world that these 20 coins all belong to the same person. Uh, because people can just see, okay, he's spending the same, the same, um, he's spending with the same pub key. Twice. That means it is the same person. Um, so what you want to do is you want to always spend these uh, coins together or not at all. So if you have three coins all belonging to the address ABC, then you want to either spend all three coins in one go or you want to not spend them at all. And by turning on uh, the grouping feature, which is in 0 0.17, uh, it will automatically do that for you. Um, so I'll talk a little bit about the knapsack solver first, uh, which is the old one. Um, so, <laughs> um, the idea behind the knapsack solver is let's just brute force the, th the thing, and, and, and that's that. That's it. Uh, so we randomize. Good stuff. Uh, well, randomize is actually good for privacy, too, so we, we want to do that always. But, so we randomize all our coins that we have available, and then we try a bunch of times. And uh, every time we try, we see, oh, how good was this one? Well, um, we're paying less in fee or whatever. So this is great, and then we try again, and we try again, and we try again, and we keep doing this. Um, and for big wallets, this is a little intensive, but um, you, that's what we've been using up until 0 0.16. So this is what you've probably been using so far. Um, so if you go in, into a little more detail, um, you will, um, okay, so first you shuffle the coins, you randomize them, uh, and then you go over them. And um, so there's a number of cases here. So one, one case is the value of that uh, the coin, the UTXO, is exactly the value that you're looking for. In this case, you will immediately just stop and just give that back. You just use that. Because that will give you no change output, just one single coin that's very small. And, uh, and it's just ideal in every, every case. So you just pick that always. Um, uh, but if that's not the case, we move on and look at the coin value. If it's less, than what we're looking for. If it's less than the target, we will add it to a, uh, a set uh, in the value list, sorry. Uh, and then we, we just keep track of how much we've added to the value list. So we're tracking all of the, the sum of all of the coins that have uh, a worth less than the target. And finally, if it's more than the target um, and it's smaller than whatever other coin you found that was larger than the target, then we name mark this as the smallest higher. Uh, so what we're basically essentially trying to do here is we're trying to find a coin that is as close to the target as possible, but higher. Um, 
Right, so at the end, if we now have the, the, value, the target as the sum of all of the uh, total, uh, then we just send everything back, the value list. And if it's less and there's a marked coin, then we send the marked coin back. So here, the less part is like, um, even, if we, even if we took every single coin that we have that is smaller than the target, we still will not be able to get to the, the, the amount that we need. So we might as well just use the one that was closer to the target, the, uh, as close to the target as possible. So that's, that's how Knapsack Solver works. Um, so um, a little more details about the selection here. So um, we get the value list and we sort it in reverse order. So we had the uh, most valuable one first. And uh, then we approximate the best subset. We, go into this in the next slide, and uh, then we return either if you had a good solution, uh, or if you don't have one, we return the marked coin. If you don't have a marked coin, then we fail. Like, we can't fulfill this. Someone is trying to send 10 Bitcoin, but they only have nine, or something like that. Um, so the approximation part, um, let me see here. Um, yeah, okay, so we, like I said, we, we, we keep repeating uh, over and over again. Uh, in this case, we repeat a thousand times. Um, so what we do is, and I told you this is very brute forcey, but we go through the coins twice. So the first time we go through the coins, we, we, we toss a die. Uh, oh no, we, we toss a coin actually. And if we get heads, we add that output. And we keep doing that. Uh, and every time we add a coin, we check, have we, have we, are we at the target or above the target? Then we, um, uh, then we check if we're better than the best that we have so far. Um, so uh, after we go through the random time, we go through again, and we just add everything that's not added anymore, and we check again. So we keep doing this uh, a bunch of times, and we just keep the one that is that is um, uh, that is the least wasteful. Wasteful. Um, so the, all the things that I, that I mentioned right now is actually done about seven times with different parameters. Um, and this is all like you try to minimize the number of um, uh, coins with a long unconfirmed chain, or you want to use only confirmed coins, or you want to use as, as trusted coins as possible. For example, it will try to use coins that are uh, that are confirmed uh, rather than using co coins that are in, the, in unconfirmed uh, and stuff like that. So it, it does these various iterations of of the same thing. So. Uh, so branch and bound is a little more, uh, a little more sophisticated and a little more efficient. So um, the idea here is to um, Right, so um, so the idea here is to use effective values per UTXO and efficient search for the exact matches. So if efficient values, uh, I'm sorry, effective values is, uh, so the idea here is that when you're, um, when you're sending coins, you not only are you, uh, not only are you spending the coins and getting money back, but you're also going to, at some point in the future, spend the coins that you're sending back to yourself. Uh, so what you want to do is you want to see what the long-term versus short-term fees are for these coins, because uh, that make, means you can make a better prediction of how wasteful uh, spending something is. You may have a coin that will actually be dust uh, in the future, or uh, you may have uh, spending a coin will actually cost you money. Um, and then we use, instead of doing this whole repeat a bunch of times, uh, you just do this depth-first exhaustive search, well, sort of exhaustive, and we just have a waste metric, and we try to just minimize that. So it's, it's very straightforward. Um, what you do is you have, okay, so like I said, we have long and short term fee rates. So we'll, we have the long term fee rate, and this is um, the minimum fee rate of like a thousand blocks in the future. Like I want to I wanna just send something, and it can confirm whenever, I don't care. And that's the minimum, the long-term fee rate. And um, um, so, right. So in in the in the code right now, there's uh, like in Bitcoin Core, you you can you can just get the cost of spending uh, a change output, 
a resulting spent uh, change output, and you can use that to figure out what the uh, effective value is for, for each of these UTXOs. And that's just basically um, the, the effective value, no, the value minus the, the fees, basically. So uh, you just ignore all the, all the inputs that have a non-positive effective value because they will actually cost you money if you spend them uh, or if you use them. And um, you, then, you then calculate the amount available. You just go through all of the, all of the uh, UTXOs and just tally them up. And if you don't have the target, you obviously fail. And um, then you sort the UTXO poll in descending order. And this is, you know, Knapsack, Knapsack Solver did the same thing. Uh, you now have the value, the top value at the top, and then down. And now here we loop a ton of times, uh, up to 100,000 times. Uh, and you're like, wait, which you said we're not repeating anything. Well, the thing here is we're not actually looping. What we're doing here is putting a boundary on the number of times that we iterate because some wallets have like ridiculous amounts of UTXOs. And what we want to find here is we want to find um, an approximate exhaustive res uh, result. Uh, so we don't want the wallet to spend like 10 hours to go through all of their billion UTXOs just to find that extra Satoshi. Uh, that doesn't seem very profitable. Probably pay, pay more in energy for the uh, computation. So um, this is the overall algorithm. There are three um, uh, there are three outcomes, I guess, uh, or three subroutines in, in, in this thing. So the one is called uh, this backtrack and record and iterate. So um, we backtrack if we run into any of these conditions. Um, for example, we run out of coins so we can't actually get to the target anymore. Then we, we backtrack because we can't find a solution. Um, also, if the selected value is out of range, which means if it's way too high, uh, or if we're more wasteful already, then the best solution, because as we iterate, we add more waste. Uh, so we can't, we can't remove waste by adding a coin. It will always add waste. So if, we have, if we're more wasteful than the best solution, we just uh, stop and backtrack. Um, so if we're within the range of target, meaning we have less than the target, we record. And after doing that, we backtrack. Um, and finally, if we're not backtracking, we iterate. So backtracking. Backtracking is, uh, so we have this, I said, I said a binary tree. What it actually is, it's, it's a, bo a Boolean vector that we add true or false to. Uh, so a true means um, it's, it's enabled, and a false means it's, it's not enabled. And this is for the UTXOs. So what we do is we just, um, we, we, we just iterate through this from the, from the end. We remove all the false entries that we have until we hit a true entry, or until we run out of entries. And uh, now, if this is now empty, then we, we, we finish, because we tried everything. And um, if it's not empty, we just unset the last entry, and then we, uh, we remove the values from the current value and the, uh, and the current waste. So we keep track of the value and the waste, uh, from the from the coins that we've added and removed. So, uh, so recording is just we just add uh, the excess value to the waste value. So um, if the target is one bitcoin and we now had a value of 1.1 bitcoin, then we add 0 0.1 to to the waste because we're wasting 0 0.1 uh, a bitcoin. What well, we're not wasting, but that's the waste in this. Um, and if it's less than the best waste, we store this selection uh, as the current best solution. So this is what we will end up returning when we finish uh, iterating. And so finally, uh, the iteration is when we're not backtracking and we're not recording, we're just moving to the next step. And we, we just add another uh, entry to the list. Um, and we just add a true, so we take the next UTXO we um, remove the effective value from the available va current value. This is uh, well, the available value, I mean. Um, and this is just so we can track that if we're running out of, um, uh, if, we, if we don't have enough to, to f satisfy the target. And there's an optimization we can do. Um, but basically, then we just add to the current value and the current waste from this UTXO that we just added. And we just go uh, loop again. So this is branch and bound. Uh, at the end, what we do is, um, well, if we don't have a selection that works at all, we just fail. Um, otherwise, we return it. But I mean, 
as I said, we're storing this as a list of booleans, so what we have to do is actually find and pull out the UTXOs and add them to a vector and return. It's, it's a minor detail, but, uh, but yeah, so that's how branch bound works. So there's some references. If you want to read the paper, um, you can do that. Um, yeah, thank you. Uh, oh, questions, by the way. Yeah. Well, I think <clears throat> I think that UTXOs can be useful even in even if they're not economical. Um, for example, if someone hard forks without you know a repro protection, you could use them to separate between the two forks. For example, so even a zero uh, value output could be used in some ways. You could also have other uses for uh, UTXOs that we haven't thought about yet. So um, I don't know. I would I wouldn't say that we should delete UTXOs because if that's going to start a big um, well, should we delete these? These are really small. We should delete them too. Um, and you never know. Like one, U one Satoshi may in the future become actually a thousand milli Satoshi, which it already is. But I mean, we could we could. Um, it, it may be possible that one Bitcoin is worth like a billion dollars. So we want to have to just uh, make one Satoshi actually divisible, and then we suddenly have a million Satoshi, uh, well, a millionth of a Satoshi being worth something, and then these one Satoshi outputs actually are used for something. So I, I mean, I don't know. I don't think we should remove anything from the UTXO set. Yeah. What Um, so if I understand the question right, you're asking why would you use this waste uh, metric uh, or would, would there be a reason to use another metric instead of this waste for certain wallets or certain situations? Um, what makes this good? Where is it bad? Stuff like that. Uh, right. So, um, I mean, branch and bound is optimized for people who want to um, just use a wallet normally. So if you're an exchange with like a ton of UTXOs and you don't care about privacy, for example, because you're like, we're just an exchange, we're open, like everyone has our you know, deposit address, whatever, then branch and bound may not at all be uh, what you want to use. Um, you may have a completely different like approach. And there's, I mean, so this waste metric thing here is, is used for branch and bound, but there's also, um, there's also implementations or, um, not invitation. There is an algorithm which claims that you should not, you should, you should create an out change output that is approximately the same as the amount you're sending. Uh, and if you do that, what's going to happen is that after you've been sending for a while, you're going to find that you have less and less uh, occasions where you have to find multiple coins. Because usually, if you send 0 0.1 Bitcoin, you're not going to suddenly send a million Bitcoin. Uh, but if you're sending 100,000 Bitcoin every time, you're not suddenly going to be sending a bunch of 0 0.01 Bitcoins. So there's like, it, it's a way to profile you as a user. Um, I haven't seen that being uh, pushed forward anywhere, but it's something that was recently, uh, I would say a few months ago, that I saw a blog post on. So it was very interesting. I hope that answers your question. If anyone else has input, that would, you know. All right, thank, thank you very much.